أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Thank you once again for tuning in uh, to one of my very short presentations, and I intend to make this the shortest of them all. So um, I just want to briefly address the new statistical magic that they are performing um, in order to come to this less than 1% figure. And what they mean by less than 1% is that out of 58% of the Americans that have taken the shot, less than 1% have contracted the virus at this current time at this current time. So therefore, that somehow makes the shot over 99% effective because less than 1% contracted it thus far, so the other 99% must be protected. That is a bogus analogy a very bogus analogy. That's like saying, well, less than 1% of people who drive aluminum cars has had a collision with a Mack truck. So therefore, because less than 1% currently has not had a collision with a Mack truck, that means that aluminum cars are 99% effective against collisions with the Mack truck. Now, if I told you that, you, you'll look at me like, really? You know, now, if, if you're foolish and, you know, um, there might be something um, that happened in your early education years that might make you say, oh yeah, that does sound right. No, that's wrong. It just means that those cars have not had a chance of having a collision with a Mack truck because if they did, they would fold up just like every other aluminum car, aluminum vehicle that has a collision with a Mack truck. So it's the same with the shot. It doesn't make it effective because the people haven't had contact with the virus yet, that doesn't mean that the shot is 99% effective. It just means that 99% of those who have taken the shot have not yet have contact with the virus to see how effective it is. That's all that means. However, if you go to my Facebook page, I did a comparison in one week's time. And what I'm wondering is like, why isn't the media doing a comparison that I did on my Facebook page because it's a very important comparison. Not because I did it, but this is the, the way you compare how effective the shot is. So they constantly bombard us on a daily basis. Oh, less, less than 1%, less than 1%. But you go to my page. And in one week, one week, those who have taken both the shots the number of cases have went up 51% in not less than a week, in a week's time. So when I did the, the math, I saw that it's nowhere near less than 1%. According to what was reported, and I'm going to repeat that one more time. According to what was reported. Now, the reason why I say that is because there is a large number of cases that was not reported. And this is mentioned in the report from the CDC. So 28.5% of the deaths not just the people who have contracted the virus, 28.5% of the deaths in that one-week period 
in America were from people who have taken both of the shots. So that's 28.5% without reporting all of the deaths. But just with the ones reported, it is 28.5%. That is a far, 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 far cry from less than 1%. So obviously these people are bombarding us with lies and misinformation. And as the old saying goes, if you tell a lie long enough, the people will believe it. So we have to keep hurling truth at falsehood until we knock out his brains. We have to be just as relentless as they are. And the other part of the story that they are suppressing, and this is why they don't like us talking on social media. This is why they always, you know, they do their best to try to ban the views of people who don't speak the official narrative of the government. What they don't want the public to be fully aware of is that a lot of us in our families are witnessing that our relatives don't catch the virus until shortly after they take the shot. And I'm sure a lot of you out there can bear witness, whether it's a relative or a close friend. I'm going to give three examples. Okay. One, I I have a cousin in Michigan. And Michigan, as you know, was hit very hard in 2020. He's my big cousin. He's more like my uncle. He's more like my father's age. And uh, he went through all of 2020 during the height, during the height of the plague and he didn't catch the virus. I called him a few, uh, about a month and a half ago. He told me he had take, taken the shot. I was calling him to tell him, don't take the shot. But he was like, uh, I'm sorry, cuz I already took the first one in another two weeks. I'm gonna take the second one. I was like, okay, well, you know, you know may Allah bless you. Hopefully everything will go well for you. A month or so later, guess what? I call him to see how he's doing. He said, I'm just, me and my wife, they both took the shots. We're just getting over the virus. Wow. You went through all the 2020 and didn't catch it. And a month after you take the shot, you catch it. That doesn't, and and I'm not the only one. Then there was another cousin of mine, my first cousin. His father-in-law, his wife's father, about a month or so after he took the shot, same thing happened. He, he caught the virus a month after he took the shot. I have another elderly family member who was in good shape, good condition for his age, took the shot. Now he can't get around by himself. He was he was driving and everything. And now he he can't get around. He, he, he can't he can hardly feed himself. He can hardly move. And they want us to believe that, oh, this is there's no clear evidence that it's the shots that's causing these side effects. There's no clear evidence. We're not sure. And, and do you, and when it comes to those numbers I was talking about, about the number of deaths, they discount a lot of numbers because they claim, oh, we're not sure whether it was the, the shots that did this or, or not, or it was the, the virus that did it or not. So they, 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 they play this game of, you know, dismissing certain uh, cases to lessen the numbers which will probably put it at 50-50, meaning 50% of those who have taken the shot and 50% of those who haven't taken the shots are part of the new cases if they reported all the numbers. So 
they claim there's no evidence. Now, let's any of you ha- who have been in a courtroom, whether you were a defendant, whether you were on the jury, whether you are an attorney, there was this one case in New York where, you know, it was a black brother, a bouncer, and it was a white woman. And, uh, and the police said, well, we found pieces of this bouncer's carpet. Think about this. Pieces of the, of the bouncer's carpet from their, from their home, meaning they went to his home and got samples from the carpet. And it somehow wound up at this, this woman's, uh, you know, place or on a person or, or whatever. They didn't find no other type of DNA. They didn't find no sperm. They didn't find no semen. They didn't find nothing else. Just pieces of the carpet. And he's in jail. I, I think he's still in jail right now. I don't know if he's been exonerated, but um, I believe he was set up. But anyway, that's just my opinion. However, just from pieces of the carpet, okay, they claim that this was enough evidence to put this brother behind bars, right? So um, imagine... Imagine that. Imagine if they had real DNA. So if you have DNA that is present at the scene of a crime, that is evidence that you were involved in that crime because your DNA is there. So you mean to tell me that the shot being inside the person's body at the time of their death, it's not evidence that the shot had something to do with the death. If someone's DNA being on scene at the time of a murder or a crime is evidence that the person committed the murder or the crime, you mean to tell me that the shot being in the person's body at the time of their sickness and death is not clear evidence? And that they were never sick from this until after they take after they have taken the shot. No, no, no. If this if this was really, really uh, a, a true crime story, those who, who make the shots would be guilty. Guilty for all of the murders, and it's well over ten thousand. Confirmed, confirmed so far, confirmed. I am absolutely sure there's far more than 10,000, but we only have to go on the confirmed numbers. So may Allah bless us to stay strong through this. Um, You know, we are proud of, of all the high profile figures who are holding their ground and not taking the shots. You know, uh, those of you who, um, (laughs) who are getting weak, we pray for you. But the best thing is that we pray for ourselves because only Allah, God can give us the strength not to give in to the tremendous amount of pressure that they're putting on us on a daily basis to submit to their political will. Thank you all for listening. And may Allah bless us with the light of understanding. Assalamu alaikum.